Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The Solar Impulse 2 completes its flight from Japan to Hawaii. Draft of the FAA reauthorization bill is delayed. U.S. domestic airlines under investigation for possible price fixing. I'm Brie Cross, it's July 6, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Even those of us who love flying will have to admit that being cramped into a single-place cockpit for five days in an aircraft that is lucky to hit 50 miles per hour has got to be pushing the limits of having a good time. That's exactly what pilot Andre Borschberg had done when he landed the solar-powered Solar Impulse 2 airplane at Kailua Airport, Hawaii last Friday. The flight from Japan lasted 118 hours and covered about 5,144 miles across the Pacific Ocean. The flight achieved two world records, absolute distance and duration for solar aviation. Their flight is dedicated to an initiative aiming at collecting millions of voices to encourage governments worldwide to replace outdated polluting devices with new clean technology. If all goes according to plan, Solar Impulse 2 will now spend a few days in Hawaii before Picard begins the ninth leg of the world circumnavigation attempt. The next intended destination is Phoenix, Arizona. This flight is expected to take about four days. We had expected to see the draft FAA reauthorization bill released by now, but that isn't going to happen. The U.S. House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee canceled its planned release of a draft this month, and it appears the bill now won't be shown to the public until sometime in August. The bill was said to have contained language leading to the privatization of the nation's air traffic control system and user fees to support the new scheme. As reported before by ANN, this plan has brought forward a negative reaction by general aviation organizations. The current authorization expires at the end of the fiscal year, September 30th. The last time the Congress tried to craft an FAA reauthorization bill, the process dragged on for years and the agency was kept running by a series of continuing resolutions. It's starting to look a lot like business as usual in Congress. After the break, the DOJ investigates airlines for possible collusion. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The U.S. Department of Justice has opened an investigation into whether domestic airlines have worked together to limit seat inventory in an effort to keep prices high. It is reported that the major U.S. airlines all received letters from the Justice Department demanding that they provide copies of all communications between the airlines, Wall Street analysts, and other major stakeholders about seat capacities or, quote, the undesirability of your company or any other airlines increasing capacity, end quote. The carriers have been asked for information dating back to 2010. The report indicates that a spokeswoman for the DOJ would only confirm that the department was investigating whether unlawful coordination took place between the airlines and other stakeholders but would not elaborate on the probe. The investigation was requested by U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal after seat capacity was openly discussed at the IOT meeting in Miami last month. It is reported Blumenthal urged the Antitrust Division to conduct a full and thorough investigation of the anti-competitive, anti-consumer conduct, and misuse of market power in the airline industry. 
Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. Final lift off. Just being here and being a part of the first flight, let alone being the pilot in command, satisfies all my professional goals. Here I am in, in the seat that I wanted to be in when I was nine years old. The first flight test of any new airplane is always a special event. In this video, you get a first-hand look at the behind-the-scenes story of the Gulfstream G500's first flight. Search Taking Flight, the G500, on YouTube. After these messages, the FAA looks ahead to commercial space flights. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG Series sealed battery technology produces a high-performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Senate has approved a bill that provides $17.425 million for the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation, $2 million for the Commercial Space Transportation Safety, and $2 million for facilities and equipment. This funding helps to ensure continued commercial launches. A man carrying $75,000 in a bag through the Richmond, Virginia airport had the money confiscated after TSA took a look in the bag. The security agent did not take the money, and it was reportedly confiscated by the DEA. If you want to find out about thunderstorms, Kansas is a good place to look for answers. NASA has joined a multi-agency study of summer storm systems in the Great Plains to find out why they often form after the sun goes down. Virgin Atlantic Airlines announced that it will be cutting 500 jobs as it restructures and continues to reduce costs. This comes after reporting in March that they had returned to the black side of the ledger. Bristow Academy has awarded the first annual Bill Child Scholarship to Per Emil Carl Albrechtson of Titusville, Florida. Bristow Scholarship Selection Committee chose Albrechtson based on his skill, financial need, and ability to operate at the highest level of target zero safety. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. A planned in-flight abort test for the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft has been moved from Vandenberg AFB in California to Cape Canaveral in Florida, and the test has been delayed until further notice. The test is designed to show how a capsule can be safely carried away from a falling rocket while in flight. It is of particular interest following the failure of the Falcon 9 booster carrying a Dragon cargo ship on June 28. It is reported that part of the delay is so that SpaceX can use an updated version of the Crew Dragon prototype spacecraft, which will be unmanned during the test. No firm date for the test has been announced. For the test, the prototype capsule will separate from the Falcon 9 booster as it travels through peak aerodynamic stress. It will parachute to a splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. A successful ground-based pad abort test of the Dragon spacecraft was completed on May 6. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. 
Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.